Hello, this is Our Rats with Team 4545 League analyzing the game between Fishhead and Basmaniac. This game was played in team event number 53 in the first round. Let's have a look. Okay, Sicilian defense, but it becomes anything but the Sicilian defense really quick. One of the strategies I've outlined in my lesson program with number 5 is a number of ways white can avoid a lot of black's preparations and against the Sicilian, Sicilian defense, I've recommended just going into a closed Sicilian King's Indian attack style. And that's exactly what Fishhead does. Maybe he took my recommendation. I don't know. Uh, but there's a lot to uh, to my lesson program. If you want to dig it up, just look at the links in the YouTube video. It's all there for free to look at. Okay. E6. And then why just kind of continue on his merry way setting up the King's Indian formation now d6 might have been a wasted wasted move here maybe black is just being a little innocent d5 is okay because this pawn is turns out is going to be moving up to d5 in a couple more moves anyway so black did lose a tempo here but white will give it back because his pawn is going to go to d3 and then to d4 but it's good to strike back with d5 in, in a closed Sicilian as quickly as you can no matter what how white's playing the closed Sicilian it's just generally a good idea of course yes white can push by with e5 but that's what he's going to do anyway as we'll see okay so black could have just developed knight f6 and bishop e7 but he didn't and see where we go bishop e7 okay now h3 now this is just typical pure king's indian attack style white's planning bishop e3 that's why he plays h3 so that it won't be uh, the bishop on e3 won't be chased away with a knight g4 okay so now comes d5 and e5 okay knight d7 now black uh, black is attacking e5 so white needs to concern himself with that and I don't know queen c7 just to uh, hit that pawn a little more if bishop f4 I don't know h6 threatening g5 then h4 just a possibility okay so that's what he does Queen c7 and now Queen e2 okay so the pawn is well uh, protected and white didn't go into the bishop f4 line that I suggested okay rook b8 is this this might be just a little premature okay what what one of the choices white uh, black can do at some point is get d4 in he could have done it already but there's nothing wrong in a way with doing it here and I'll, I'll show you why the point is that you want to it's kind of double-edged you're you're giving this knight a square on d5 okay At the same time you're conceding e4 which is firmly under blacks control you're conce you're conceding uh, that square to a knight but let's just have a look at the way this goes okay if you play d4 now <coughs> white will go ahead and play knight d2 and now knight b6 okay and then knight e4 and now knight d5 now if anything black could have um, let's see I missed something here black could take this pawn gotta be careful watch out for some tricks and so forth but black let's see knight takes knight takes queen takes okay on either of these discovery discovered checks the uh, queen gets out of there so white's gonna have to remaneuver a little bit to uh, to get knight e4 in because of the counter attack on e5 so d4 was a much better move than what what black played here but here I'll show you what the culprit is and why black's not finding this move it's not that he's not capable of finding this move if he just analyzed the position he, he could see the possibility but here's the culprit and I'm pointing it to it it's that clock up there okay black is moving too fast what's the hurry this is standard play uh, he's got his original time plus 59 seconds he's made nine moves so he's gained uh, what 450 seconds which is seven minutes he spent less than seven minutes on this game right now okay he spent less than seven minutes just on this opening and it's not a very familiar opening and so with this move he only spent uh, 40, 
51 seconds. Now that's not really enough to, to, to consider all the cannon moves. And even if you uh, want to start a queenside pawn advance, you could do it right now. B5, right? You could do it right now. Okay, B5. It's not under attack. Now what can white do? Well, okay, you can play A4. Now you can't play A6, but that's all right. That's okay. You just it, this is a kind of position you can go by. Okay, you can go by with this move because this is a, a theme that black often does in in these closed Sicilians. They're pushing the pawns up as fast as you can up the board. Okay, then there's still useful squares for black here. Uh, the knight can go to a5 at some point to help c4. Okay, much much better to uh, active play with the with the minor pieces when they can coordinate around some square. The bishop can get to a6. That's hitting c4, right? All kinds of possibilities where white is more or less still has to complete his queenside development and then start generating the desired kingside attack if that's if that's what you want. A lot of times white just sits in this king's ending uh, uh, reversed and decides which side of the board to go on later. Okay, so rook b8 was the best move or is, well, I'm sorry, it was not the best move. D4, D4 just is, uh, gives black uh, all kinds of options. Okay, so rook b8. And once again, black is just going to play this way too quick. And now he's got his b5 in. But you see, what white is doing is white's turning this into, into the French defense reversed. I mean, sorry, not reversed, just the French defense. Uh, it's almost, it's almost there. Uh, You'll see it here in a second. Now, bishop b7. Now, why did he do that? He's put the rook on the b-file. Now, he's blocked the b-file. Maybe he was hoping to push here, and then uh, if black, uh, white takes, you can take with the rook. Maybe have some pressure on b3. Or if he doesn't take, black takes on c3, and the rook's operating on the open file. Uh, the bishop would have a much better, a bit much better scope and future on this game in a6. So bishop b, d, uh, bishop b7 just blocks his rook, and it runs into this this pawn that's in the way. So bishop b7 was a bad move. And let's just look at the time on the clock. Well, he, he lost two seconds, so it means he took his increment plus two seconds. And that's still too quick, especially when you're building time up. You have plenty of time here to, to find a reasonable plan. And this is going to continue to haunt black f uh, for a few moves. Let's see. Well, here he took a little more time. Uh, he took about four minutes, but he's and he's finally playing what something I said he should have done earlier. But that was combined if he got d4 in, and that's a move that is no longer available, I believe. Well, actually, you can still do it. D4 takes take. Yeah, you can still do it. Well, anyway, we still aren't exactly in the French. And then here's just another move. Now I don't quite understand that because. Okay. If if you want to play b4, you can do it now. You don't need to get the other pawn there to uh, to exchange. Uh, like for instance, if if white does this, which he probably won't, you know, you don't need to be taking back with this pawn. There's a couple reasons for it. You've taken the rook off the a file, so you no longer have that open file that you want to attack on, and there's potential if anyone gets an outside pass pawn later in the game it's going to be white just consider it white has pawns on b2 and and a2 black would have pawns on the b file and the c file who's going to get the outside pass pawn white is right okay let's move on okay now d4 now we've got the the pure french defense reversed and Black's really struggling struggling for squares for his pieces. And, and if he'd gone with some of the other ideas that I suggested, he could have had activity on the B file. He could have had a knight on D5. Could have had a bishop on E6 providing pressure. And now he got a secure uh, B5. It was under attack, so C4 push. And now this is interesting. You have to calculate that, it, that uh, on bishop takes C5, that if pawn takes, that the knight won't go back to D7 and end up winning this pawn. So, and that's kind of what happens. And really, black can't take on c5 because now white's got a tempo on b5. Now, if the bishop had been on a6 earlier, that wouldn't have been a problem, right? It wouldn't have been a problem. Okay, so now we reach this interesting position here where 
uh, white has a protected pass pawn and it's anchored in white has the bishop pair for what it's worth but right now the bishops aren't worth a lot with the pawns all uh, locked up on the on the board uh, black can generate some activity with his with his queenside pawns but he's got to kind of step carefully here if he pushes them too fast he's he's uh, b4 and c3 and they're ex the pawns are exchanged he will have a pass pawn also but it won't be protected what black needs to do is try to get a counter make this c4 pawn passed and how do we do that well let's let's think about it how do we do that well the way to do that is to be advancing your queenside pawns and even then it's not clear if you, we can get it done okay so for instance I uh, just playing some fantasy moves here just to show that not saying they're good moves if white if black plays a3 uh, white goes I'm sorry a4 white goes a3 maybe maybe not okay now that maybe that lets us get what we want now we want to take we want to take uh, B, b4 takes a3 and get our pass pawn if he takes back with the pawn or have some activity on the b file which black is blocked so what if white doesn't push a3 well then guess what we push a3 okay we'll push a3 we don't mind if we get a double pawn okay because that pawn on a3 will be weak we'll eventually maneuver around and win it or at least have entry points into the into the white position so black's eventually going to get a pass pawn of his own on c4 maintaining a lot of the balance plus if you can open up uh, a line or two a file the b file black is primed to get get a little counterplay going instead of just sitting back here defending this position is what which, which happened okay so let's let's go back to the main line and as i said bishop c6 and it finally clears the b file which was was a good idea but the bishop still isn't helping black at all and now white has time because he's not being pressured any what any in any way shape or form on the queen side white has a chance to try and generate something on the king side king f8 and here once again look at the clock black has basically been playing with his increment uh 45 seconds a move that's that's too fast that's way too fast this a normal game should last an hour and a half for about 40 moves which gives you uh two and a half minutes a move and white is uh, black is spending 45 seconds a move especially during the most critical phase so white's clearly better here and bishop h3 it's kind of hard to see exactly what white's trying to do but black just helps white out again and again it's done with with no time i i just don't understand how these people can play 45 45 chess and and not not uh, take their time so here look at the clock 45 14 let's back it up so his time went up 14 29 seconds that meant he spent 16 seconds on this move 16 seconds and some of it's just reaction time you're sitting back waiting for a move then you've got to find a move then you got to coordinate your mouse and go in and play it so probably thinking time on this move five to ten seconds why uh, you got all this time built up. You're 12 minutes ahead of your opponent. You haven't castled. You haven't connected your rooks. You don't have any open lines. And why why do you continue to weaken your king side? That just gives a square away to to black. I mean, sorry, to white. G5. It just gives it away, and it creates a target for uh, for white. He can be pushing G4 and start trying to trade off pawns and open up lines make uh, g4 g5 it takes white an extra move to get that in but with g4 if white wants to try that he's getting the open file one move quicker so you gotta take your time I, I preach this and i can't say it enough okay so eventually uh white just goes about his business and uh there before but i think that's just about the last uh bit of aggression by black on the queen side white's getting primed to open up lines there it comes all the quicker now you got this open line and then white finds a very nice continuation which just finishes black off and there's just basically no defense here and check now watch this rook g1 and black has no moves the threat is i'm sorry queen queen h3 mate 
Wonderful game by White. Black, you got to slow down. you got to slow down. And I thank everyone for their time.